Now, before we dive into these two topics, I want to explain you and I want to show you what IV curve stacking is. This is something of a, a concept that I think you should be aware of before we look into the actual charging algorithms. And this builds on the information that you've learned by now on what an IV curve actually is. So let's go to the whiteboard and pull up that uh, the IV curve and the graph that we've seen before. So we've got on the i-axis, we've got the current and amps, voltage and horizontal axis. Then we have the IV curve with the three points there that we've seen before. And we understand that power equals voltage times amperage. Now the thing is, I've explained all of this to you, but this is only applicable to one photovoltaic cell. So one panel consists of many cells all combined together. But what I explained to you so far is only applicable to one cell, whereas in a a real-time panel, all the cells are connected in the series, so all connected head to toe as a daisy chain plus minus all connected together in one long string. So then what happens to the IV curve behavior of the complete module if you connect all these individual solar cells for which we know what happens on the IV curve if we connect them all together? So 60 identical cells are all connected in series to form one photovoltaic module. Now let's see what happens with the IV curve of the complete module if you connect them all in series. So we take that IV curve that we looked at before, but we like make it a lot smaller. We adjust the scale on the current and the voltage axis so that we get a much smaller curve. It's still the same curve, it's just smaller. You get it, right? So if we take one cell and we connect it with another cell in series, so two cells in series, the amperage stays the same. The amperage output of two cells is the same as one if you connect them in series but the voltage increases, the voltage doubles. So you can take the one cell and just copy paste and place it next to the other one. So that the total IV curve of the two cells yeah, looks like this and the vertical part between the one and the two is not there, of course. So you can here see that the voltage doubles and the amperage stays the same, right? So the same is true if you add three cells in series, etc., up to 60 cells in series. So now the total open circuit voltage of all the 60 cells in series all right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Which is the complete solar module is 60 times higher than the open circuit voltage of one cell. So the voltage is a lot higher than one cell. And Normally for the um, crystalline cells, both the mono, mono and polycrystalline cells, the open circuit voltage for one cell is somewhere around 0 0.6 volts. Right, So just remember that value, 0 0.6 volts. So this is the open circuit voltage of the complete module. Now what happens with the short circuit current? It remains the same, right? So the short circuit current of 60 cells in series is identical to the short circuit current of one cell. But of course, the, uh, the power output, so the maximum power point of the complete module, is 60 times higher than the maximum power point of one cell, right? You're getting more, you're getting 60 times more power out of a module with 60 cells compared to one cell. That makes sense, right? So the final IV curve of this one module with 60 cells looks something like this. High voltage, high power output, and identical current uh, compared to one cell. So now what would happen if you would take this one panel and combine it in parallel with another panel? This is something that is often done in smaller solar energy systems. So if you would take this one panel with this IV curve and then connect it to another panel with an identical IV curve, you can stack them on top of each other because connection in parallel increases the amperage. So if you take two panels, the amperage should be twice that of one panel, but the voltage remains the same, right? So you take these this curve and then paste it on top of each other and then you get this will be then your final curve right whereby you can see that the voltage remains the same the open circuit voltage the two panels in parallel remains the same but the short circuit current for the two panels in parallel doubles and of course the power output from the two panels doubles as well so that is for two panels and the same would be true if you connect another panel in parallel right so it just bumps up the amperage and the power output but the voltage remains the same Okay, so that was quite a bit of theory again. Now let's go to a real life example. I want to go online and I want to show you an example of a panel where several cells are connected in series. 
and then see what kind of an influence this setup will have on the open circuit voltage of the module, on the short circuit, and on the maximum power point. So for this exercise, I want to go to the website of LG. So we're going to lg.com slash us slash solar. And I want to look at one of their panels. So let's select the Neon 2 panel. Uh, that sounds good. It doesn't really matter which one for this exercise. And we are selecting the 365 watt high efficiency LG Neon. Sounds great. You can already see here that it, it says 60 cells, 60 times 10. And remember that I said that normally the average open circuit voltage of a crystalline cell is 0 0.6 volt, right? So here we have the 60 cells, 6 times 10. Let's go straight to the specification sheet. So here we are at the electrical properties of this particular model. Um, and it's tested on the SDC, under the standard test conditions. Which is quite interesting. So STC is a set of conditions under which you can test a panel. And they will tell you then, well, under these conditions, if we test in such a way, these are the results. Which is quite important because you can see that they're testing it under an irradiance of a thousand watts per square meters, which is totally possible in real life. But it is relatively high. So depending on where you are on the world, it can be a little bit lower or higher. Um, and the, the STC works with a, a cell temperature, so they assume that the cell temperature is always the same. And this is how they test the module. And it's here 25 degrees Celsius, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's under STC testing conditions. So we can see here that the open circuit voltage of this module is 41.7 volts, right? Which is close to what I said, like the 0 0.6 volts per cell would be 36 volts normally. So it's it's slightly higher than nominal, than uh, what normal, which is good. That's an advantage. And you can also find here the, the short circuit current where you are there. 11.3 amps is the short circuit current. And they will also tell you what the current and the voltage is for the maximum power point, right? You see here that the maximum power point is 370 watts and you get that at an amperage of 10.61 amps and a voltage of 34.9 right which makes sense you can see that the vmpp is lower than the open circuit voltage so 34 is lower than 41 and you can see that the short circuit current is higher than the impp 11.3 versus 10.6 now there's another value that you might come across as well, which is called the NMOT, the Nominal Module Operating Temperature. So it's just a different set of test conditions. So here you can see that they, for testing the same panel, they've used a lower irradiance setting of 800 watts per square meters. And instead of keeping the cell temperature steady, what they're doing is they keep the ambient temperature steady and then the amount of wind speed steady, which is so ambient temperature is 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And the wind speed is one meter per second, which is really, really low. You can barely feel one meter per second. Um, so you can see that under these test conditions, uh, we have a lower open circuit voltage, 39.3 versus uh, 41.7 for the under STC test conditions. And the short circuit current is 9.09 .09 versus 11.3. Which makes sense, right? Because under NMOT, the irradiance level is lower. Instead of 1,000, it's 800 watts per square meters. So I thought it was just a nice exercise to see what happens where you can find the different values that we discussed before. And you can see how these values fluctuate quite a bit, depending on which kind of model you're looking at or which kind of test conditions are used. So let's look into the chapter on MPPT. So